What's up everybody, I'm Flying Scorpion, and today's gonna be kind of a combination of two subjects, Elite Dangerous and the Oculus Rift S. So recently I got the Oculus Rift S, it's in a box over here, I'll just grab it, try to hide the shipping label. Uh, so here it is, and I hope that doesn't show my address on there. Um, I'm sending it back. I've had it for about two weeks now, I've used it for a total of about five hours, and this is gonna be a little bit of a buyer beware on uh, the Rift S. So if you're thinking about getting a, um, a virtual reality headset and you wanna get something that's good bang for your buck, like an introductory level headset, the Oculus Rift S is suggested or by others to be a good entry level um, virtual reality headset. Now, I, I should, probably should have done more research on it before I got it. Um, I don't think that the product is necessarily bad. It, it, it's still a good product. Um, but it's good at what it was designed to do, and I bought it for Elite Dangerous. So Elite Dangerous, you're sitting in your chair, you got a hands-on throttle and stick, or you're on mouse and keyboard, or maybe you're on a controller like this. Um, and the Oculus Rift S is designed for you not to be sitting in your chair with something like that. It's designed for you to be standing up in a two meter by two meter play area with these little handheld remote controlled uh, controllers with like virtual reality laser pointers coming out of them. So you can shoot guns, you can pick something up from across the room like a couch and levitate it in, in the air. You can like grow and shrink things and throw frisbees and sword fight and stuff like that. So the hand tracking and the head tracking and the moving around in a two meter by two meter area is where you're getting the best bang for your buck. So if you get something like the Oculus Rift S, I would recommend using it for what it was designed for, those types of games. And they have a store, uh, the Oculus Game Store, where you can find games like this. And uh, my experience with the stuff that it was designed for was good. But that's not what I got it for. I got it for Elite Dangerous. So I'm sitting down playing Elite Dangerous and the biggest problem I found was that I couldn't keep the headset on for more than about 30 minutes before I started feeling nauseous and getting headaches and feeling sick. And I had to keep taking the headset off or take breaks and just close my eyes and kind of like just tilt my head back for a second. Um, so there's a couple things that you should know. Like number one, you can't see your hands on the mouse and keyboard. So uh, you will have trouble finding the buttons on the keyboard uh, because you can't see it because the headset's covering you and that was a problem for me. When the headset goes on, it's designed for the average person's facial structure, the average person's head, and obviously not everybody's the same. And um, it's kind of like when you go to some event or work or something, you go, everyone gets a free t-shirt and the t-shirts are absolutely gigantic, you know? And it's like, okay, yeah, anyone can wear this, but if a small person's wearing this, it's gonna feel like a dress uh, or just, you know. Um, I found that that was the case with the nose spots on the Oculus Rift headset. It's It's got this giant cavity for people who have wick noses that look like the Wicked Witch from <laughs> The Wizard of Oz, like this huge nose cavity. And I and like there's a, a window, I guess, this gap between the nose and the headset where you can just see down and see your desk and see the light coming through. So it actually worked to my benefit because when I couldn't see my keyboard, I'd just like tilt my head up and look through that gap between my nose and the headset and then I could see the keyboard. So, you know, a little bit of immersion breaking. So I just want you to be aware of that. Another thing to be aware of is that you cannot adjust the width of the eyes. So if your head, if your eyes are farther apart or closer together than what the average person is or whatever, you're, you can't fix that on these headsets, on the Oculus Rift S, and it, it, it might matter. The other thing I noticed is that the, um, the field of view was a bit disappointing. I thought it was gonna have a wider field of view. Um, of course, you can look up the stats online, but until you actually put the thing on your face and you can see, it's like, oh, okay, it's not, you, there's a lot of space on the sides and on the top and on the bottom where there's no coverage from the virtual reality. It's just black emptiness. So, um, like if I can hold my hands to here, I was hoping that I could see out to there. This is That was a big point for me when I got these, is I thought that I was gonna get a, a better field of view. And it is better than looking at a monitor, because in a monitor you're just looking at this like rectangle in front of you and there's a lot of space. Um, it's better than that, but it's not that much better than just having a curved widescreen monitor. A curved widescreen monitor is probably about the same with the field of view as you got, as I would get with the Oculus Rift S. 
um, the graphics processor I got in RTX 2060 and what I found was that when I was flying into asteroid fields in Elite Dangerous there was a significant drop in frame rate and uh, I had to turn down the graphics by a fair bit to keep the game running smoothly <clears throat> and when you're getting frame rate loss while you're looking at a monitor, it's not as bad as when you're wearing a virtual reality headset and the only thing you can see is a slideshow in front of your eyes. That's really disorienting and it, does, it, it made me feel sick to my stomach. I was like, oh gosh. Um, there's a screen door effect as well with virtual reality headsets and they seem to be getting better and better at improving upon this. So the Oculus Rift S for the most part had no noticeable screen door effect uh, at least barely noticeable while I was using it in their Oculus Rift demos where there's like a robot and butterflies landing on your finger and you're shooting a ray gun and stuff. It, it didn't seem bad to me. But when I was playing Elite Dangerous and um, there was like high fidelity graphics with explosions and lasers and spaceships flying by and asteroid fields with shadows and particle effects and all that stuff. Oh yeah, there was a screen door effect. There's like you could clearly see these outlining box. It looked like it was like giant fat pixels in front of my eyes and it looks bad like you're looking around and you're seeing like the screen the the visual effects cross from one box to the next box and down and seeing it pass through the black borders it looked ugly so uh the other thing too is that the on the edges of the peripheral vision is blurry so if you're, for example, in the cockpit of a ship and there's like lots of information on your screen, like there is an Elite Dangerous, numbers and, and uh, text, or like the name of a character, wanted, not wanted, your fuel levels, your speed, and, and all these other details, your eyes are moving around and it's more efficient to use your eyes to glance down at the different information all over the screen. That's the way I do it. It's, it takes a lot more I guess energy and stuff to be like whoop 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 you know like this like no one I don't I wouldn't do that that, that my neck would snap after a while so I'm playing Elite Dangerous I got the headsets on and I'm looking down and it's blurry because it's on the edge of the lens and I took the lenses off and I looked at them and sure enough the edges the peripherals it's blurry for some reason so there's you can vaguely see the information but you're like squinting and you gotta like turn your head right and look straight at it to get the information to be able to read it without you know making your eyes sore um so yeah uh, wow i'm really probably making you go i don't want to buy this so let's let me just go back because i don't want to just bash this thing without saying uh, anything good about it and i already have said some good stuff about it what it was designed for i think it is good for what it was designed for standing up in a two meter by two meter play area using the included handheld remote control devices playing the kind of games that were made to really maximize all the features of virtual reality. My first experience with virtual reality was with this, and it was very cool. I, I hope that everyone gets to experience it. I mean, I doubt that everyone's gonna be able to, but I wish everyone got the opportunity to experience it at least once, because it's really like stepping into your own imaginary world. Um, it, it's, it's very cool. It's a cool experience, uh, but uh, it's not quite what I got it for. If uh, I were you and if I was thinking, if, for example, if you're the target audience for this, if you're thinking about buying the Oculus Rift S for games like Elite Dangerous or perhaps Microsoft Flight Simulator or something like that, uh, I would uh, probably say if you can afford to spend more money, maybe try getting something that's a, a, a higher level product like the Steam virtual reality headset. The Steam VR headset has a wider field of view. It has a faster refresh rate. It's just got overall better graphics on it, um, but it's much, much more expensive. Uh, and if you can't afford to get uh, more of a top of the line headset, then I would say maybe spend that money towards getting something like a HOTAS instead, a hands-on throttle and stick. And that's what I might end up doing with the money I get back from this. I'm gonna have this cost way more than a HOTAS. It does. Uh, or maybe get a solid state hard drive or something like that. So I think that's it. I've said enough. Uh, today I just wanted to make a video about something a little bit different uh, than elite, just purely dangerous. And since this is cover the, the shipping label, this is the last day that I have the box, even though you can't see it. Uh, here we go. It's in there, it, you know. Um, it's just a little bit different to actually hold the box with the thing inside of it than the, even though it's in the cardboard box, then to just be like, yeah, I had it and it's gone now. It's like, oh, there you go.
All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for the new subscribers that have been coming to the channel. Like, again, I don't really know where you guys are coming from. I try poking around in YouTube analytics and see where the who, where are these subscribers coming from? What videos are they coming from? A lot of Warframe uh, watcher, a lot of Warframe views, mostly Warframe views, and most of the comments are coming from people requesting me to do more videos about modding in Solaris. I uh, haven't been modding in Solaris. Uh, but I should probably just talk about all that stuff and maybe a channel update video or something like that. But thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, take care. Bye.